it's liberating. So I'm in better shape. I'm healthier. I'm 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 more you know creative in some ways. I'm thinking clearer. I think that's great. Yeah, my brother was doing the same thing. He works for Ernst and Young, and he would fly out on Monday to Charlotte. They're based in New Jersey, and he'd fly home on Thursday. And now they have like a baby, and so. He's like, I yeah. don't want to go back to that. You know, it's been two years of nice. Well, the whole, know? whole great, uh, the great resignation is related to this. That there's this this awakening that you can you can work where you live, rather than live close to where you work. And also, you can work to live and not live to work. You know, I think that yeah. people's mindsets have shifted a little bit. You know, so yeah, that's right. it's just, it's, there's been some good that's come out of this all <laughs> this yeah. craziness. Yeah. I think so. Totally. Was your trip here okay? Yeah, well, we, I was in Chicago uh, on business, and then tonight, yep. I'm going back to O'Hare tomorrow, tonight and got a 6 o'clock in the morning flight. So you don't want to go to the opening Brewers-Cubs baseball game at Wrigley today? Oh, my God. In fact, I was it invited. It would have been terrible. <laughs> I, was, I was invited to go. Was it last night that they were going to play before the, I think there was a game. Was there a game last night or today was the opening day? No, today day? was the opening day. Yeah, they have the first game of the MLB because the Yankees, I guess, no, canceled because of weather. 40 degrees. To too. Not going to. Not going to no. sit down in 40 degree weather with a little wind. No. In Milwaukee with the roof is nice, but you know. Is it enclosed completely? Milwaukee is. Nice. It's a retractable roof. Yeah, which is really nice. Yeah, we've got one in Miami too. It's. You probably great. for the heat <laughs> more so than anything. Well, and the storms too, yeah. Yeah, it's because it yeah. normally it rains right about when baseball starts, like 6 37. Um, but it's, it's it, there's no one there. Right. That's the sad part. We don't have any. Well, everything's cyclical. You, you took know our what I mean? you took our best player. <laughs> Yelich, is he, st is he still here, Christian uh, Yelich? Oh, Christian Yelich, yeah, yeah he is. No, he's unbelievable. I'm just gonna get in one he's class had a to sync everything interest. up here. There you go. All right. All right. Let's get into it. So I don't waste any yeah. more of your time. Well, Governor, it's very nice to meet you. I appreciate you taking the time talking to us today. Yeah. You know, you're here at UWM Waukesha to talk about world affairs. How do you think the affairs of our world are going right now? And our role in it pretty pretty a pretty dangerous time right now with uh, the uh, invasion of Ukraine I think I think the United States has stepped up uh, diplomatically very effectively I think regaining the trust of the European NATO alliance has, has been important I would hope that the president would not constantly in his team not constantly tell um, Russia what we're not going to do mm -hmm. and focus a little bit more on providing support that's been asked for by uh, President Zelensky. We, we've provided a lot of support but this, this is a critical moment as it relates to the notion that somehow Russia was inevitable that they would conquer Ukraine has been proven wrong and now there's a possibility of, uh, of a stalemate being broken by Ukraine winning but that requires more support um, more military support, more intelligence support, doesn't require U.S. troops. So hopefully that's the next stage of this, and I hope there's a sense of urgency about it. You know, I think a lot of people here in the U.S., you know, we see so much on the television screens about this war, but a lot of us feel like it's a world away. How can the war over there impact us here in the U.S. directly? I mean, besides economically, we're already seeing a lot of that, but, uh, you know, the everyday life, I mean, what's at threat here? What's at risk? So the threat is that if the world becomes so unstable because the United States no longer uh, is a, is a um, viable ally, you're going to see um, disruptions the likes of which we haven't imagined uh, in the most recent past. You could, you could see China invading Taiwan. Trust me, the Chinese are watching the United States' response to this. Uh, you could see alliances change both economically and militarily in Southeast Asia. You could see at the same time we're, we're uh, dealing with the Ukraine situation, we're trying to negotiate with the Iranians a new agreement, and that's disrupting uh, security in the Middle East. And the United States can't just be isolated from the rest of the world. And But for us, who? who is, who's going to lead the world to create a more stable place where we can prosper and where we don't have disruptions in our economic life or certainly threats of national security. So I think it's important. We don't have to have, we don't have to be the world's policeman, mm -hmm. but uh, American leadership is vital right now. We have a lot of state at stake. Totally, with yeah. This. Let's talk back here locally a little bit. I'm sure you've probably heard, but Milwaukee is a finalist for the RNC in 2024. Yeah. Any chance you could put in a good word? <laughs> 
I think it's in pretty good shape based on the, the community response. Um, uh, it's uh, summertime in Milwaukee. Looks sounds like a pretty good place to be. So um, conventions aren't what they used to be, mm -hmm. but they're still the. It would be a place where there'd be a lot of focus and. Best on what what I can tell, there's been um, a lot of bipartisan support, community support for bringing the RNC here. It'd be good for the Republican Party to, to be in a state that's definitely a swing state. I think Wisconsin's now purple. Well, Wisconsin decides presidential elections. That's been proven. We used to say Florida did. Well, you know? they, they too. It kind of <laughs> depends on the year. How do you think Republicans go about winning Wisconsin back in 2024? I think focusing on the future, not about the past. Uh, there's a lot of interest in what happened in previous elections, and people don't want to hear that. They want to know, how can I, is there enough stability for me to be able to pursue my dreams? Can I take care of my family? Are crime rates going down rather than up? Are gas prices going down because we have an energy policy that allows for more production? Um, will my children be able to afford uh, getting a degree, and is that degree purposeful and meaningful right now? Those are the issues that um, controlling our border, a strong national defense, a forward-leaning um, policy, I think, is how we win. Less about the past, less about all these divisive things that tear us apart, more about giving people hope that there's going to be a better future if, if our team wins. Your gut feeling, do you think Donald Trump runs in 2024? I have no idea. Trying to undermine, underwrite the uh, the aspirations or, uh, <laughs> you know, underwriting Donald Trump is like way above my pay grade. What is your relationship with him now? Because I know in the past it's been a little interesting. Um, it's pretty much non-existent because I'm out of politics. Mm -hmm. um, I think he probably ought to be a little more out of politics and let the next generation emerge. There's a lot of great leaders coming forward. I mean, I, I have no ill will towards the guy. I just, you know, I've moved on with my life. And that's kind of what you should do. Politics and public service is about serving. It's not about making it a career. It's not about the protagonists. In the, it's not a fight. It's about helping people. And um, I had my chance to do it for eight years as governor. It was a blast. It was really on my highlight reel of life. And I tried to be president in 16. I didn't win, and I've moved on. Do you think DeSantis has a chance of going for it? Yeah. No, I think he's been a good governor of Florida. It's a complex state to lead. Uh, and he is, um, there's, he has a big legion of fans because he's taking on, you know, these cultural issues that people, I mean, I, I can't, some of this stuff is like the language being used, I don't even know what it means. Mm -hmm. um, the left has kind of gone wacky. We have our own wacky side as well. And he's been really good, I think, of uh, pushing back against the wokeness that exists, in our, that, that's real. So, um, that earns him a lot of support outside the state. And inside the state, he's going to win re-election because he's been a good governor. You know, on April 18th, Wisconsin's largest school district, Milwaukee Public Schools, is going to go from their mask mandate to mask optional. In Florida, there was actually a law banning yeah. mandates like that. <laughs> well, that's so weird. I mean, for me personally, to, the idea that you would decide now to get rid of masks when all the studies suggest that young people are not the threat and the chances of them uh, getting severely ill are literally like one one thousandth less than people my age. Why would you create all of these developmental challenges, particularly for kids in elementary school, making them exercise outside with masks on? There's no scientific evidence that that's a good idea. If, if it takes that long for someone to have the humility to look at the facts and look at the science to make changes, wow. You can see why parents are upset. Why do you think that this sort of governing has been in place for so long? A I think scare of the, a, a fear of the like the what if, the scare I think factor. Part of it is um, these executive powers. So a hurricane comes or a tornado comes. Governors have executive powers that are extraordinary, but they're for a very discreet reason and very temporary in their nature. And then you go back to a regular order way where you you have to legislate. You go to the legislature to pass laws. I think a lot of elected officials at the local and state level, and certainly in Washington, they kind of like the fact they can just do it by, you know, walking around like they're Latin American generals, passing executive orders. 
we don't, you know, the public health crisis uh, has subsided. It's time to go back to regular order way. And I think it's hard for people that have this power to give it up, and they should. Let's talk a moment about, I mean, you brought up the elected officials. We just had an election on Tuesday, and school board races I read about were it. incredibly contentious across the board, across the state. And we have a lot of different demographics in Wisconsin. Sure. I know that, especially when you were governor of Florida, you had a big push in getting student and parent involvement higher in districts. A lot of parents are going to school boards, and sometimes they get ugly. Yeah. Do you think that that's a good thing that people are becoming more involved, are going to the polls specifically for their school board races now? Absolutely. And um, I hope what happens from this, look, you know, it's not that long ago, a year, a year and a half of agony of where kids were, weren't allowed to go to schools across the country, where parents were the teachers of their kids, and they didn't see the engagement in many places of of schools responding to this challenge effectively, and they were frustrated, and they weren't listened to. And then you have on top of that um, all of this uh, the wokeness that exists in some places, and there's a threat or a perception that it's across the board. Putting that aside, I do think that parents are legitimately upset about how we've handled the pandemic as it relates to the social costs for their children. And I hope what happens is this engagement, which is pretty unique in, in recent history, that parents stick with it and have a broader agenda, including, most importantly, parental choice, where parents can choose where their kids go to school. And Wisconsin's a state that has got great private and public school choice programs, and they should be expanded. And Florida's done the same, and other states now are expanding because parents want it. And that's a good thing. That's a very positive thing for our country. I have to say that I've watched more school board races in the last two years than you know I've ever wanted to watch, more or less just because of how much would come out of them. You know, it was a lot of times infighting and you know accusing people of certain things. I mean, it's just it's gotten ugly in some situations, but like you said, the passion's there. You can feel the passion on both sides. Yeah. So, put aside the controversy du jour, because every you know there's always there's different examples in right. every case. I think the idea of making sure parents' voices are heard, making sure that there's total transparency of the curriculum, of the books, of the learning, engaging them to be um, helping their children learn, giving parents the data to suggest that, I mean, a lot of parents think their kids are above average when they're below basic. Mm -hmm. And so that connection where parents have a really constructive role in education and then empowering them to make informed choices for their kids that's the ultimate goal here, I think, of taking that energy and turning it into something really positive. Last question for you. What kind of scares you the most going forward with kind of the state of our country right now? Yeah, I think, um, I think it's the divisiveness and the coarseness of our culture. You know, when you have, uh, you have opponents of the president, and I'm not a fan of his, but shouting obscenities or putting on signs things that you can't explain to your six-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, on both sides, divisiveness, ugliness, rancor. When we have big, big challenges that we can fix, we're the only country in the world that could be young and aspirational and emerging and optimistic again. We're the only country, we're the greatest country in the face of the earth, but we have to start acting like it. And we're, this deep divide now is really creating huge problems. And my hope and prayer is that we figure out what unites us rather than all the things that we disagree on each, with each other. Very good. Well, the music's playing, as they say in a worship. So Thank you. I appreciate the time. Let me take the yeah. microphone from you before yes. you go running away with it. I won't take it. So I when promise. you're heading back to Chicago tonight? Yeah, I got an early we'll flight tomorrow. We'll be safe because I think it's supposed to start rain, snow, mix, and so. Uh. I know. Yeah. It's just the ugly weather. Yeah. Enjoy Florida. Yeah, thank you. I'm, My I'm, parents are down there. They live in yeah, Naples. What, so. Oh, everybody. Yeah. What's the, I guess it's they the moved I there like two years ago. Isn't yeah. I seventy five right here? Uh, no, forty three in ninety four. Yeah. But where's I seventy I seventy five ends in Chicago? I don't know. Uh, but seventy five goes all the way up from Florida. Yeah. Does it? it goes from Naples basically. <laughs> Just keep going. From all the Midwest.